Now you know a lot more about uh, SBSFU theory. Let's uh, practice it and see uh, how easy it is to uh, use it. So what's the purpose of this hands-on? We will uh, start from a simple application uh, that uh, is uh, supposed to be your application. Uh, we will make sure this application is running standalone without any uh, secure boot. And then we will make the necessary modification to be able to integrate it in uh, the SBSFU in some way to be started by the SBSFU unchecked. Uh, and then uh, the application will be checked and launched by SBSFU. The application uh, we will be using uh, was created by uh, Cubemix and uh, it is uh, just uh, displaying uh, heartbeat traces on the terminal and is uh, blinking LED. And uh, it is by default uh, mapped at the beginning of the flash like this. So first let's clean our environment, the one we left uh, from the first hands-on. So we had this, so just select everything here and close the projects. Then reset the target, so we use the um, our scripts here and there are, reset the target. So it's uh, performing a regression and we can see that now it's uh, RTP level zero. And uh, TerraTerm should be launched, so I kept it from the previous one. So now nothing happens, I can clean the, the screen. Clear buffer. Okay. Now let's build the simple application. So we need just to import it in our um, workspace. File, open project, and let's go back to our root directory, L4, and simple app. Select the folder and open. Then just build it. So we build the application. It should be 14.9k. So the simple application is following the, the Cubemix uh, gener generation uh, rule. Here, so we get the same size, that's okay. And now we will launch uh, this application using the debugger. So click here, run, sorry, yeah, debug as application. So we launch automatically the debugger, it will ask. If we change the perspective, yes, switch. So here we are at the beginning of our application. So here in the slides we're here, and then we run the application and see what's on the display. So I open here the TerraTerm and click run. And I have a Hello world on a heartbeat. That's our simple application. So now let's stop the debugger and we should have the, still the heartbeat running. Now we have our application that is working fine. We tested. We want to uh, adapt it to the SBSFU. So to adapt it, you need to uh, change the location of the simple application to be in the slot active one. 
And uh, here we have the mapping of our board, uh, Nucleo. Uh, the reason why the slot active is at the end of the flash is related to uh, the protection of the firewall, which needs to keep all this area reserved just after the bank one. So uh, the beginning of the slot is uh, this address, 0808600. At the beginning of the slot, we have our header. So the application needs to be put uh, 512K later, 200 uh, exa uh, offset from the beginning of the active slot. So this should be the new location of our simple application. So what we will do? First, we need to change the mapping from flash uh, .ld to put the address of the beginning of the application, change the size also of the application. If we come back here, the size is 4 to 4. And also, we need to reserve a 4 kbyte of RAM for the um, secure engine that will not be accessible anymore. And uh, uh, there is a need to align uh, the firmware to 16 bytes. So the firmware size, the binary generated, should be aligned with 16 bytes. The uh, reason is that it is encrypted using AES, so it is a constraint related to the encryption. And also, what is very important is to change the offset of the vector table. The, if I come back here, the interrupt vector is now located here instead of here. So you need to make the simple app work uh, and the interrupts work correctly, so that the interrupts go in these interrupt vectors and not in these ones. Uh, you need to change the, uh, the offset. So first, go to the settings in the linker script general, and we will change the, the linker dot ld. So here, simple app, properties, settings, we come back to tool settings here, and linker general. I open a bit more, and here, if I browse here, there is another file that was prepared for you that is doing the necessary changes I described. So it's flash SBS if you apply and close. And the second thing you have to do, it is described. So here we just made selected the SBS if you. The second thing is to open this file and put these values 86200 here in the system file. So just go in SRC, system here, and change it in the vector table. So 0, 8, 0, uh, 8, 6, 2, 8, 6, 2, 0, 0. And save and build. So we will reset the, app, the target. So here, the new application is built. Uh, we reset the target here. So we start from a clean target. OK. And next step, we use the dis disassembly view. So we use we first activate the uh, debugger so as we already configure it we can click here
it starts the debugger so download the, the image and we can see that the main now is in 866 something so that it's not starting from zero so we are now in a, and if i activate the debugger by instruction stepping for instance or you could do it through windows uh, and uh, show view this assembly it would uh, open this and you can see here also that we are in the good uh, in uh, in our slot active and if we run the application and open the start the box it is working fine even here okay so that's what we made and then i will ask you to press the reset button so i will do it here i click the reset button i've just done it and the trace stopped so why after reset we didn't restart why is it stop stopping working so here is the explanation after system reset the arm reads the reset address at flash base address so here we have erased uh, the, uh, the, the flash before uh, reflashing the new application so here the application is linked at flash base address so when it uh, is linked at base address it's working fine so the, this was the application we had at the beginning but when it's uh, linked uh, in as, as another place of the flash it cannot work anymore so what why it worked the first time and the reason is that because the debugger uh, knew that it was uh, uh, at an offset in the flash so after downloading the image uh, the, um, the debugger is setting correctly the program counter and the, and the stack pointer that's the reason why it was working with the debugger so now that we have our application that is uh, running in our uh, new slot but uh, is not able to reset uh, we want to launch it by the sbsfu so we need to uh, create the application metadata so that sbsfu can check it so to do this uh, sbsfu as we could see provides a post build script uh, that is uh, launched automatically at the end of the user app building so that's why what we saw on the first hands-on this line where we could uh, change the uh, version for instance so for our simple app we don't have this uh, script that is made to run the, with the user app so we need to adapt uh, for for the, for the application uh, this uh, this script uh, so for this uh, we you we took the script provided by sbsfu and uh, adapted it uh, and we hard coded the parameters instead of uh, here providing parameter these parameters are at now are hard coded in the post post build um, we adapt the directory uh, between the sbsfu and the new application and uh, also we added some traces and uh, also we add the version in the file name so that it's easier to to manage so these are called the uh, post build scripts in the scripts directory and here at the beginning uh, the two main files we already seen the .sfb file that contains the binary with the header and the encrypted firmware and the full binary containing sbsfu the validated header and the firmware in clear so let's launch the post build 
simple app v1.bat. Go back to the scripts. Here, 0201 post build. You have here the trace of what it is actually doing. So first it is uh, encrypting the application in an encrypted file with uh, AES key. It computes the signature of this uh, of the firmware in clear here and it generates the update firmware so it concatenates it generates the header with uh, the the uh, simple app that signed so which is actually the, the the digest of the firmware and also it is generating the signature of the of the header and concatenates the first uh, the first uh, encrypted file. And the next se step is to generate the big image. So in two steps, first it is uh, generating the, the the new header of this uh, big image, uh, which is uh, the header pre-validated header. And then it is concatenating the SBSFU binary, this header, and the application firmware in clear. And that's it. We have our uh, firmware that we can see. So let's check the content of what was generated in the uh, here in our simple app binary so we have our two files that have just been generated simple app v1 and simple app v1.sfb so this is we will flash the full binary so to flash it we'll reset first the target oops so before we need to stop the debugger, which is still attached to the target. So I come back to the scripts. Flash, uh, no, reset target. And flash is basically simple app. So it's, it is flashing the simple app v1. So if we go back to the console, we are back to this trace indicating that uh, SBSFU is running and has activated RDP level one. So we need to restart our board. So I'm coming back to the Teratem and plug it again. So here you can see we are resetting after two heartbeats resetting. So why is it resetting? It's working but resetting. Here you have the answer in the SBSFU trace. So here we need, we have something that is not working. Basically, we detected an error in our, so we want to update it. So here, let's change and uh, activate the, um, the watchdog. So to do it, you need to, uh, First, define this uh, reload key, and then to update, uh, to reload this uh, the watchdog, and we will change uh, the delay. So let, let's do in uh, live. I open the main. 
So here on the user code begin, I define uh, I will go faster, carry load 0x 0000aaa and sign. And then in the code here in the while loop here I just change the delay to see something's changed and then uh, e dg control space ah, it's not detected kr equal k reload so that should be okay rebuild So here I've rebuilt this and we need to generate the simple app v2. So here launch post build simple app v2. Okay. Simple app v2 is generated. So to update, here we have uh, something different from the first sentence is that we don't have uh, the ability to update from the application. So what we need to do is to use the uh, SBSFU internal loader. And this one can be activated thanks to the blue button. So first press the blue button, keep it uh, pressed and press the reset and you see that it is um, switching to uh, the internal loader we are still inside the SBSFU okay and then uh, select the simple app v2 so file transfer y modem send And we need to go back to our simple app binary and simple app v2 here. So here you have, you see it is waiting a little and then transferring. The reason is that it is first erasing the slot and then uh, writing the, the new uh, image in the slot download and then it resets and installs the new firmware so let's see what happens after the reset you can see that now we are much faster in the update and oops it has reset watchdog reset again So I didn't update correctly. K okay, reload. The re value of the reload is not accurate. Yes, missing A. Apparently, yes. So let's unload again. So I need to create again the binary. And then create the simple again the simple app v2. I can download the v2 again on the same version, but I couldn't uh, load the v1. Press continue, and here I press the blue button to go in the transfer in the update mode. I send the, again the v2 that I just created and now it should work.
install new firmware, again swapping images. Here we are. Now it's not resetting anymore. That's it. So you could see uh, the, again uh, what happened. Uh, here we downloaded in the slot download one. Um, once the download has been done, uh, SBSFU is resetting to go back to its uh, normal finite state machine and detecting a new firmware downloaded in slot download one, checking its, in its uh, uh, digest and signature and install it uh, using the swap process. Reset again and launch without watchdog. So here we will check the um, anti-rollback. So just try to update with V1 version. So here we have the V2 and the V1. So press again the blue button to enter in download mode and transfer the V1. And here you see that it has detected an issue, firmware version rejected by anti-rollback. So as we are directly in the SBSFU loader, it is able to check, to verify the, the header. And uh, that's, uh, that's why it stopped directly the download of the new firmware. So to conclude this uh, little hands-on, uh, you could see that uh, the integration uh, of an application in SBSFU is uh, quite simple, uh, very few things to do, a few, few change in code and uh, in the mapping file, just changing the vector table and, uh, and the location of the, the application. You could see that uh, one script is still uh, required to generate the, the files uh, containing many because of the generation of the header. And uh, you can reuse uh, the original script to, your, uh, to adapt to your um, environment. What is, was not addressed in, in this hands-on is the uh, uh, firmware loader in the application. Uh, that we could see in, on the first hands-on. Uh, this requires the integration of the code that uh, is provided in the sample application. So we would need to, uh, to reintegrate what is done in the sample application, integrate in our own application. So the second hands-on here is um, to check what happens when we try to corrupt the update image. Uh, just to show you uh, how uh, SBSFU is uh, uh, behaving. So what we will do is uh, edit the update uh, binary file to change only one bit in the firmware and try to update using this input file and uh, see what happens. So here is the uh, We'll temper the simple app v2 uh, that we know that can be uh, used to update. And first, we will temper the content of the firmware. So here is the header, and here is the firmware. So firmware is encrypted. So tempering, uh, you need to know what, uh, what you do. So to do this, uh, we will use uh, 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 binary editor called HXD and uh, let, let's do it. Let's go to the uh, tools and launch the HXD file, HXD editor. Here it is. And then go back to uh, the simple app binary and drag and drop the SFB file. So here at the beginning, the first 
is the header and then uh, let's change something in the in the binary so let's go maybe at the end we have a 2 f so change only one one bit to e for example and file save as simple app v2 so corrupt uh, uh, the firmware corrupted then let's try to load this firmware corrupted so again launch the header oops transfer send the corrupted file so it will erase the slot it cannot detect the corruption right now because it is it needs to read to read all the firmware but on the next check it will try to install it so it will decrypt it and as you can see here firmware signature fail so we could see that during the installation it is checking the new firmware signature and it is failing let's now try to uh, so here it's what we just seen so let's try to tamper the header file now so close this one and uh, open again the correct one and tamper so I want to tamper just uh, here put a, a one here zero one and save as header corrupted And try to update again. Up. File transfer Y modem. Oops. Transfer Y modem send. Header corrupted. So here it is as it is checking the header during the process it will reject it directly or maybe I need to check again because I made the mistake on the first so try transfer Y modem send header corrupted so here it detected the error and will reset and the authentication failed So here, this is what we made. We we have tempered inside the uh, part that is signed. So we just change here in the version something. So header corruption detected. In conclusion, you can you can see that uh, the um, the file that is transferred, uh, the the update file, uh, cannot be changed in any way. It will be uh, directly detected by the SBSFU and will be rejected. So, and uh, this is the main purpose of the secure firmware update. Thank you for your attention. Now, in this uh, appendix, I would like to give you some detail about the post build scripts that uh, we have used during this uh, hands on. So uh, here are the four steps basically that uh, are used. First, we use uh, this uh, tool called prepare image that takes different uh, parameters. So the first one we encrypt uh, using a key with an initialization vector 
the simple app.bin and we produce the simple app.sfu that will be encrypted. So the, the key initialization vector uh, AESCBC uh, algorithm and we produce the SFU. The second uh, step is the generation of the signature or the digest of the firmware. So just running the SHA-256 and put it in a simple binary file. Next step, uh, here we uh, create the uh, .sfb file. So as you can see, uh, here is detailed the complete uh, firmware, uh, the complete uh, header, sorry. And uh, so here are the basic parameters we use. So the version that is uh, provided, uh, the, the simple app.sign, um, that we just created before, uh, initialization vector that we provide in the header, and the principle here, as explained during the, the um, uh, theoretical part, is to uh, first create the, um, the header uh, use, use, uh, useful part, I would say, and then to to sign it uh, thanks to uh, first create a digest and sign it uh, using uh, the private key, ECC private key. So the signature is located here. And the next uh, part is not signed, it's just used for uh, this uh, the state uh, management uh, of the firmware. And uh, you, for, so for internal use of the SBSFU. The next, so, and then, sorry, the, we put the, the firmware encrypted at the end and we concatenate everything in a binary file. So here are uh, some details what is used for what. So you can come back here to, to have better under, understanding. So next, step is the generation of the pre-validated uh, header. Uh, pre-validated means uh, here we have, uh, we put some uh, pre-validation so that the firmware can be used as it, if it was uh, already installed. So it is exactly the same process as uh, previously for that .sfb except for this, uh, for this part. And then the last step, uh, so there are five steps actually, um, is to make the big image, so concatenate the SFU, SBSFU, uh, add some padding uh, to match uh, the, uh, the memory mapping, add the, uh, the header, so the, the one we just created, and put the uh, simple app or the, the application in clear. So that's it for the, this appendix to show you uh, what is done in all these scripts.